Hello, I'm Rebecca of Pocketful of Posies. Today's project is another bodice drafting tutorial. I had been planning to do another bodice drafting tutorial and see if I could make it even easier ever since I made my previous bodice drafting tutorial. If you'd like to check out that video, you can use the link in the description below or there will be a pop-up at the end of the video if you'd like to watch that. So that bodice I drafted based on my measurements. So this time I thought, how could we make this easier? Now, while I was thinking about this, this also coincided with my watching Our Flag Means Death and absolutely falling in love with Steed Bonnet's costumes and color palette. And I just, I just really love them love the colors used in this show. Then the lovely Opus L and I did a Our Flag Means Death cosplay video and she invited everyone to join her and do some fun Our Flag Means Death cosplays. So all of this came together and it seemed like kismet so I thought let's do it. Let's combine it all. Let's do something in Steed Bonnet's color palette, as well as doing a history bounding type bodice drafting tutorial. And let's make it as easy as possible. So to make this as easy as possible, I'm going to draft this bodice pattern with as little measuring or math as possible. So that's pretty exciting, right? <laughs> And in order to do that, I'm going to be using a t-shirt as my starting point. Now, if you're going to do this, you want to make sure that you use a t-shirt that is well fitting, but not too baggy or not too tight. If it's too tight, the bodice is not going to fit because t-shirts are stretchy, but if it's too baggy, it's going to be too big. So you want to pick something that is figure hugging a bit but not super tight. I'm really excited to share this process with you so without further ado let's get into the drafting. Here we go! Start with your paper of choice. I like to use tracing paper so I can alter the design easily. Make sure to put the shirt on and mark or pin where you want the waist to be. The full length of the shirt may be too long. Take your t-shirt, not too tight, not too loose, and fold in half down the center front or back, fold the sleeves out of the way, and lay the t-shirt out as smoothly as possible. Trace around the entire t-shirt. Don't worry if your lines aren't super neat, you can clean them up later. I used my French curve and ruler to neaten up my traced line. The next step is to decide the neckline you want and add seam allowance. I usually use a quarter inch seam allowance. You use whatever you like. I use a fresh sheet of tracing paper so my original stays unaltered. For my bodice, I wanted to add a nod to 18th century stays, so I chose to make the bodice front lacing and I brought the sides of the front piece up a little to use for grommets to attach shoulder straps. I freehanded the design before cleaning it up with my rulers. Since the back will need to include the entire shoulder strap, I measured the distance from the front piece to the top of the shoulder on my original draft and drafted a shoulder strap piece to add to the back piece. A fresh sheet of tracing paper for the back of the bodice. This piece will be cut on the fold. I added the shoulder strap extension to the back piece. 
Remember, the style of your bodice is completely up to you. You could do a rounded neckline or a v-neck. You could keep the high neck from the t-shirt and make a vest or doublet. Additionally, you could extend the center front into a v-shape or add a peplum or even a skirt. Another point about this bodice, like my previous one, I'm not going for any kind of historical accuracy here. I do want to explore the early 1700s fashion at some point, but that is for future me. This I wanted to be a steed bonnet inspired garment that is perfect for history bounding or your local run fair or something like that. Not historically accurate, but fun nonetheless. As always, start with a mock-up. My mock-up came out pretty well, so I felt comfortable going ahead with cutting out the bodice. I used pink linen for the lining and a scrap of pink and beige striped drapery fabric for the outer fabric. I didn't have a lot of the striped fabric and I did have to piece the shoulder straps. Assembly is pretty simple. I pinned the lining and fashion fabrics wrong sides together. Next, fold the center front edge over. I cut mine on the selvage, so I only folded once. If your fabric frays, do a double fold. Baste the two layers together. You can do this step on the machine using the longest stitch length. I basted mine by hand. If you want to use boning, mark your boning channels next. You can thread mark them or use a heat sensitive pen or chalk or whatever you like. Now to sew the boning channels. I started with the center front folded edge as I will add boning to the center front opening. I added another boning channel parallel to the center front, leaving enough space between them for grommets to lace the bodice closed. The amount and placement of boning channels is up to you and your design. After sewing all of the boning channels I wanted, I next inserted plastic boning. This boning I'm using is cheap and not as good as the synthetic whalebone I purchased from Burnley and Trowbridge. I was saving that for a different project. A cuddle break with Hercules was next on my agenda. Breaks are great for stretching, water, food, always a good idea. Next, sew the side seams. You could do this before inserting the boning. I didn't for no reason. <laughs> zigzag fell or bind the side seam raw edges. I sewed the seam allowance down and used that seam allowance as a boning channel. Bind the raw edges. Depending on your design, you may not need this step or choose to do something different. I used pre-made bias tape. Do you have a favorite seam finish? Let me know in the comments. I sewed the binding on right sides together with the machine before turning the binding over the raw edges and whip stitching it down to the lining by hand.
All that was left was inserting the grommets. I used metal grommets and you could also make eyelets by hand if you prefer. I think this history bounding bodice came out really well. I'm happy with the way it looks. I think it's an excellent nod to Steed Bonnet's color palette. <laughs> I think he would appreciate this bodice. I paired it with a petticoat that I had that I made several years ago. And I'm thinking of making another petticoat to go with this as well for more of a everyday look. So it doesn't look quite as costumey, but... Again, that's another project for another day. Do you enjoy making history bounding projects or things that you can wear out and about that have a little bit of historical costuming in them, but can also be worn as regular everyday garments? Let me know down in the comments. So much for watching i really appreciate you spending your time with me if you enjoyed this video give it a like subscribe if you haven't and if you'd like to be notified whenever i upload you can hit that little bell icon if you'd like to support the channel further i have a coffee account and that is linked down below please let me know down below if you plan on making a bodice or if you enjoyed our flag means death i'm really interested to hear what you all think again thank you so much and i will see you on our next sewing adventure bye